Hello and welcome back to another episode of How to Be a Better DM. Um, I'm your host, Caden Otley, and today we're going to be diving into some more world building. So if you've been following along with uh, my episodes, listening to the weekly episodes, then you'll know this has kind of been my focus. And it's because it's what I'm doing a lot of in my uh, you know, DM prep. So I'm passing that along. Whether you're building a bustling city for your players or um, your players are going to explore a small village with its own unique charm, there are some key places that every fantasy town should have. So grab your map and let's embark on this journey together. Here are 10 essential locations that will bring your fantasy town to life. So let's start where all good adventures start. Number one, the tavern. The tavern is the beating heart of every fantasy town or village. It's where stories begin, adventurers meet, and rumors spread. Picture a dimly lit room filled with the scent of ale and roasting meat, the sound of laughter and clinking mugs. This is where your players can gather information, recruit companions, um, or they can just chill out after a long day. You know, sometimes it's nice to just grab a drink and pull up a, a list of, of fun fantasy drinks that have weird effects and let your players just you know talk and gossip a little bit. Consider adding a few unique elements to your tavern to make it memorable. Um, some ideas, maybe the tavern has a signature drink with a mysterious history, or the bartender is a retired adventurer with a treasure trove of stories. The tavern could also have a bulletin board filled with job postings and local news, giving players a place to find side quests and plot hooks. Maybe there's a bard playing in the corner whose songs hold cues or clues to forgotten lore or hidden treasures. Number two, the marketplace. This bustling hub is where your townsfolk gather to buy and sell goods. From exotic spices and rare artifacts to everyday essentials, the marketplace is a very fun place to spend some time in your campaign. It's also a perfect spot for unexpected encounters, uh, secret deals, or a bit of pit, pit, pickpocketing action Sorry, uh, for the rogues or whoever else would like to try. To add depth to your marketplace, consider the variety of stalls and vendors. You might have a grumpy dwarf selling finely crafted weapons, or a mysterious elf peddling enchanted trinkets, or a charming halfling with an assortment of delicious pastries. The marketplace can also be a place where cultural exchange happens, um, with vendors from distant lands offering unique goods and stories. The diversity can provide a rich backdrop for your players to um, explore and interact with. Something else to keep in mind is that when you're, uh, well, keep in, keep in mind that depending on the setting of your town, the marketplace might have different things. So if your, you know, town is set in a desert, you might find roasted scorpions on a spit. And the herbalist shop might be a lot more expensive than surrounding areas because they have to import everything. You know, there's not much growing in the desert. So... You know, as always, just make sure that you're taking into account the, the surrounding areas. Um, while we're talking about the marketplace, there is one thing that I wanted to bring up. And this was, I talked about this on my last episode, but there's a website called Thieves Guild. And uh, it's thievesguild.cc slash shops. And this is an awesome tool for generating marketplace stock, like what you might find in a marketplace. And it even gives you like a low, medium, and high price for each of these items. And so if you need a quick reference and, and you don't have a ton of time to hash out every single shop in a marketplace, this is a great way to circumvent some of that preparation. Number three, the government building. No town is complete without a seat of power. The government building, um, whether it's a grand castle or a humble town hall, is where decisions are made and justice is served. This is the place for political intrigue, where players might petition for help, uh, confront corrupt officials, or attend important meetings. The design of the government building should reflect the ruling style. So, for example, if it's a monarchy, the 
building might be opulent with grand halls, rich tapestries, and um, lots of ornate furnishings. If it's a republic, it might be more austere and functional. Consider who holds the power in your town and how they might wield it. Are they benevolent? Are they corrupt? Um, are they just figureheads controlled by shadowy advisors? This location can be a really great place to pick up some gossip, um, maybe political drama, offering plenty of opportunities for your players to get involved. Number four, the blacksmith shop. So some of you um, might have heard the episode that we did at the Wasatch Forge, and that's here in Salt Lake, um, Utah, in the United States. And um, if you haven't listened to that episode, I highly recommend that you do because we talk to real blacksmiths and they're real blacksmiths who also play D&D. And so they provide some really awesome insight into um, how to incorporate a realistic blacksmith shop in, into your town. And, and in fact, they recommend that you have many as the blacksmith shop is kind of the staple of all of these middle, um, or sorry, uh, medieval societies. So, um, yeah, a good, a good blacksmith shop um, is obviously essential as well because your players need to be able to pick up um, armor or weapons or maybe there's, you know, different quests that require um, them to pick up stuff for farmers or really anything. Blacksmiths are just very essential. To make a blacksmith shop stand out, again, go listen to that episode because there are a lot of good tips in there, but... Um, you could think about the blacksmith's backstory. Maybe they are a master craftsman with a secret technique, or a retired warrior who forges weapons for the next generation of heroes. This shop could also have a resident uh, apprentice, and um, the apprentice will be eager to prove themselves and perhaps in need of some assistance from the players. The shop's ambience should resonate with the clang of a hammer on the anvil, the heat of the forge, and the smell of burning coal. So again, um, in that episode there, we talk a lot about different things that um, you might be able to do with this blacksmith shop and, and even some plot ideas. And a lot of those are really, really cool. So definitely go check that out. Number five is a church or a site of worship. Spirituality plays a crucial role in many fantasy settings. And so a church or other side of worship is a must. This place provides solace, guidance, um, perhaps divine intervention or healing. You know, if you, um, if you need a place for a hospice, this might be a good one to, to put one. Um, it could be a towering cathedral or a simple shrine or a grove dedicated to nature spirits. Um, at least if you're playing in the regular, you know, D and D fifth edition rule set, then, you know, you know, you know, there is a rich pantheon and, and that pantheon, um, plays an important role in the society. And so, you know, if this is a homebrew world that you're creating, make sure that you're taking into a consideration that, you know, people tend to, um, fall back on religion, especially during tough times. Number six is um, some kind of food or a wealth source. So every town forms be due to like a um, source of sustenance and or income. So this could be a farm, a mine, a fishing dock, or um, think any other resource. It's the lifeblood of the town's economy and a potential source of conflict or adventure. For example, a farm might be threatened by marauding creatures or a blight, while a mine could be plagued by dangerous monsters or labor disputes. A fishing dock might face pirate raids or mysterious disappearances. The townsfolk's livelihood depend on these resources, so protecting them or exploiting them can lead to engaging plot lines. The food or wealth source is also a great way to tie the town's economy and well-being to the broader world, making it feel like a living and breathing place. When setting any scene, it's imperative that you tap into the five senses. When it comes to sound, 
One of the best ways to do that is with music, ambiance, and sound effects. And that's why we've teamed up with Monument Studios. Monument Studios provides easy to use soundboards perfect for dungeon mastering in any setting. If you want to see this in action, go to fantasy-plus.com and get 10% off of your first month when you get their Fantasy Plus app by using the code BETTERDM at checkout. Again, that's fantasy-plus.com and BETTERDM at checkout. Use music to amplify your gameplay. Another reason this is important is, you know, for the example of fishing docks is um, more places where you can kind of pick up gossip from somebody who maybe isn't in the center of town all the time. They're out on the seas, they're exploring different places. Or in the example of a farm, you just have a, a very unique perspective of a farmer. So it, you know, offers more role playing opportunities and different things as well. Number seven is a jail. The jail is obviously where lawbreakers are kept, and it can be a grim reminder of the town's darker side. It's also a potential adventure site, um, you know, because we all know that our players sometimes are going to end up doing something illegal, and um, they're, you know, they they might end up there, or and maybe maybe you have a good set of players and uh, they're very moral and they are really interested in breaking somebody out who you know was wrongly accused and is on death row the jail should feel imposing uh, with sturdy cells watchful guards and perhaps a few secret tunnels like skyrim consider who runs the jail and how justice is administered in your town Um, is it fair and just or corrupt and brutal The jail can also house important NPCs, such as, um, like I said before, the wrongly imprisoned person, um, or a dangerous criminal with valuable information, or a revolutionary leader plotting their next move. Um, These elements could all add, you know, some new layers of intrigue. Number eight is a hospice. So I uh, touched briefly on this when I talked about number five, um, saying that you know, maybe the church or the site of worship kind of act as this hospice, but a, a hospice is a place of healing, um, and that is vital for any community. The hospice, whether it's a grand hospital or it's a healer's cottage or a church or site of worship, um, should offer some kind of medical medical care and respite for the sick and injured. It can be a haven for your players to recover, um, learn about local ailments, or meet knowledgeable healers who may be able to help them with, you know, curing a mysterious disease. To enrich the hospice, think about its staff and patients. The head healer might be a wise old sage with a deep understanding of herbal remedies and magical cures, while the patients could range from common townsfolk to more important NPCs Um, or even your players. Maybe your players end up there because they were badly injured and, um, you know, in your rule set, hit points, you know, maybe, maybe when you get down to zero, there's like lasting consequences or, or different things, you know, you, you can come up with your own rules there. The hospice can also be a place where your players learn about local diseases, poisons, and other health-related challenges, providing opportunities for um, medical and herbalist-themed adventures. Number nine is a criminal layer or a resistance base. So every town should have its shadows. A criminal layer or some kind of a resistance will add depth and intrigue. These hidden locations are where rogues gather, plots are hatched, and rebellions are planned. So whether it's a thieves guild, a rebel hideout, um, or a smuggler's den, this place can provide the players with under the table jobs, seeker information, and morally complex decisions. To bring this location to life, think about the leadership and structure of um, the criminal or resistance organization. Is it a tight-knit group with a charismatic leader or a loose network of operatives? 
What are their goals and how do they interact with the town's authorities? The layer itself could be a network of tunnels beneath the city, um, a hidden room in a legitimate business, or a secluded camp in a nearby wilderness. Um, these locations offer endless possibilities for espionage and, like I said, morally, you know, gray adventures. One more thing to consider with this one, um, going back to number three, you know, with a, with a government building, thinking about the type of government that you have. If the city is extremely oppressed, um, this criminal organization might be fairly prominent, or maybe at this point in your story, they've really been squashed out, and um, they're, you know, they're just kind of remnants left over from what it once was. Thanks again for listening to our show. If you like our content and would like to engage with more of it, head over to our Instagram account, at how to be a better DM, and give us a follow. Make sure to watch some of our Dungeon Master Rules videos while you're there to give yourself some more structure and procedure as a Dungeon Master. Also, don't forget to reach out with a DM, and we can talk shop, and I can get to know you a little bit better. Thanks again for listening. Or, um, if there is extreme wealth, maybe there's, you know, rings in the city, and um, think like Bossing Say in, in Avatar The Last Airbender, you have... They're really, really wealthy up in, in the middle, and then the outskirts are kind of filled with crime. And our last one is number 10, um, the inn. So I chose the inn for number 10 because um, I think it's really important to provide your players with somewhere to have downtime and to be able to interact with each other. Um, that's, you know, sometimes that's overlooked. So... Uh, similar to the tavern, um, you know, you, you your players can kind of rest, but it's also a hub of activity where stories are shared and alliances are formed. Consider the inn's ambience and its clientele. Is it cozy? Um, is it a welcoming place with a warm hearth and friendly staff? Or is it a rundown establishment with a shady reputation? The inn could also serve as a crossroads for various characters, from weary travelers and mysterious strangers to local merchants and adventurers. Um, the inn, depending on where it's set, if it's on you know the outside of the town, could be a really cool place to meet some interesting people because it's you know uh, maybe people who wouldn't necessarily be allowed through the front gates end up at this inn for the night. And there you have it. So 10 unique places that every fantasy town needs. And of course, uh, this is this is my opinion. And there are probably more that I didn't think of in this list. But, you know, if you have these 10, then at the very least, your players are going to have a lot of unique places to explore. And um, you have a lot of interesting plot points to kind of play around with. So thank you for joining me on this journey through... Um, our fantasy town and remember to subscribe to how to be a better dm for more tips and insights on crafting unforgettable campaigns um, i'll probably continue to do segments of surrounded you know surrounding world building so um oh and one last thing thank you to our sponsor monument studios and their new app fantasy plus We've been using Fantasy Plus in our campaigns, and it is amazing how much it changes the feeling when you're walking through these locations, and you can hear the ambience that comes along with it, and you've you know got to experience some of that in this episode. So thanks again to Monument Studios and Fantasy Plus, and if you're interested in subscribing to Fantasy Plus, definitely check out the... Um, the link in the description or um, you can visit fantasy plus and use the code better dm for 10 percent off and um, guys it's it's really really cheap 4.99 per month and you get so many sound effects and ambience and music to help enrich your campaign so until next time